Hey guys, Matt Fish with the Brandon Riddle for you. So I just did some running, so I'm a little bit out of breath. I gave myself a couple of minutes to uh, cool down. So if I have a little bit of trouble talking at first, uh, that's the reason. I want to talk to you guys today about three different kinds of cardio, not specific exercises, but you no know, categories, how we classify them, the pros and cons of each, and then you know, give you options and information, okay? So the first kind, it's what we call low intensity or steady state cardio. Think of walking, jogging, swimming. Okay, these are th an activity you do for some amount of time. And it's that simple. You're going for a jog for an hour. You're going for a 45 minute walk. You're swimming for a half hour. You know, your pace is pretty much constant and the intensity is uh, low to moderate. Now, here's the correlation. The lower the intensity is, the higher the duration has to be. It's the only way that works. Because the whole goal of cardio is to force your body to use energy, and the energy is going to come from body fat and make you, you know, leaner and healthier and all that good stuff. So if you do low intensity for a low amount of time, you're really not forcing your body to use much energy. So if your intensity is low, you do have to take uh, the duration high. You know, for an hour, if you go longer, even better. Okay, but that's steady state cardio. And there's a lot of good things to it in that it's simple, it's very safe, and actually with the way our bodies work, the lower the intensity is, actually more uh, calories come from body fat. It doesn't really make sense, but it's true. Now you could also say the less calories you burn, but from those calories, more are coming from body fat. The opposite of that kind of cardio is called high intensity cardio, or just called HIT. Okay, what this is, you are doing an intense activity and you're putting everything you have into it, but the duration is very short. I'll give you an example of a workout I personally do uh, in the spring and summer when it's nice out. I get to either a flat field or a football field or even a track if there's not a lot of people on it. I will pick an amount of time, usually 10 to 15 minutes depending on my energy level that day. I will sprint 100 yards as fast as I can take about a five second break, turn around, sprint 100 yards back. Five second break, sprint back, five second break, sprint back. As you can imagine, two or three minutes of doing that stuff, you know, you're breathing, you know, your speed has gone down tremendously, but you just keep on pushing yourself to that 10, 12, 15 minute uh, mark. So what do you get out of that? Well, first of all, for 15 minutes of work, something like that, you could be burning two, three, 400 calories for 15 minutes of work. Even better, when you, when you exercise uh, with that intensity, you create what's called the afterburn effect. What this is, basically your metabolic rate increases, so you're burning more calories the rest of the day. Now, how many calories that is, that's kind of debatable. Uh, back in the day, we thought it was like a, a huge deal, like a couple hundred. Now people are saying it's not that much, but 50 or 100. But you know what? If I can be on my couch burning more calories, doing nothing, you know, that's a win. I will take that. Okay, so the benefits of this is that, you know, in today's society, we don't have that much time to exercise, especially if you're working at a job or two jobs, taking care of kids or like, who knows? So for me to tell you, yeah, do something for an hour, hour and a half, that may not be possible. But to do something really intense for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you know, most can find time to do that. You know, if you really strap for time, here's a workout for you. Do calisthenics. Jumping jacks non-stop. Do like 50 seconds worth, 10 second break. 50 seconds worth, 10 second break. Do that for 20, 25 minutes. You just got a good workout. You burned a couple hundred calories. So, I mean, this does have its benefits because it's more reasonable and the, durations, and the duration is low. And really, you know, if you have a lot of time that day, you could do one hit workout in the morning, one at night, as long as you're not taxing your body too much. Okay, the third kind is basically we are combining the two and it's called interval training. So what this is, we're gonna have most of our exercise, steady state, low to moderate intensity, but then for specific amounts of time, we're gonna ratchet up the intensity and go as hard as we can. I'll give you an example. If I'm on the treadmill, let's say I'm going at a 3.7 speed at a 2% incline. I'm walking, okay, moderate intensity. I do that for five minutes. Then I take uh, the incline up to eight, I put the speed up to seven, and for 90 seconds, I'm going as hard as I can. 90 seconds over, 
back down to two, speed back down to 3.7, and I go for another five minute walk. You know, five minutes goes by, I repeat that process. So, you know, it's mostly like low, high, low, high. And uh, with this, you kind of get the best of both worlds where for most of it's low intensity, but those little peaks make you burn a lot more calories and you can activate that afterburn effect. So after it's done, you know, you're still in a higher metabolic rate. So if you ask me, which one should you do? Which one's the best? The answer is whichever one you want to do. Okay, maybe one is better than the other and trainers have had fights about this. The reality is any one will work if you do it correctly and your diet's in check. One may take you longer to get your goals, but to me, that's okay. As long as you're on the path, you know, let's say you have a target weight and it takes you an extra 10 days to reach it. Is, is that a big deal? I, I don't think so. They all benefit the body. So, and you know what? There's no reason you can't do like low intensity one day, high intensity the next, interval training the next, and you know, make your training program your own. So again, when you learn about this stuff and you start doing this and you can manipulate things the way you want to, this whole fitness thing becomes a lot of fun. You can actually get very creative and design your own workouts where you're doing like a 30 second interval, then maybe you know, 30 seconds of moderate intensity and two minutes of low intensity and just create some awesome workouts that you enjoy and benefit you. So guys, I, I hope you found this uh, video informative. Take care, have a good day.